Once again, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Front Door Show. Today, uh, as I do uh, every day at 8 o'clock, I have a special guest that comes on to my show. And today it's a little different because usually you see me guys do DJs and promoters and stuff like that. But today, you know, we have an artist. Her name is Isis. How you doing, Isis? How you doing? Hi, DJ Prieto. How are you? Good, good. good. <laughs> So I'm going to pretend like people don't know who you are. Let's pretend because of the, of the okay, fact. Perfect. So, yeah. so I want you to introduce yourself and basically kind of give a little, little quick bio about who you are. And, sure. And... sure, sure, sure. Well, hello, everyone. Thank you, DJ Prieto, for having me. Um, you were the first one, along with Carmen Aguilar, who brought me over to Chicago. So I was very excited. That was what, if not last year, the year before, we got time to yeah, yeah. It was last year. It was for, it was in April last year. Look at that. So I really, I had a blast. I love Chicago. I want to hopefully go back. <laughs> but just the beginning, um, I am a Puerto Rico born singer. Uh, I, my father joined the army when I was one years old. So I traveled around the world and I currently am 13 years in as an army nurse. And so when I am not nursing and healing patients and specifically labor and delivery patients, delivering babies, I am traveling around the world, singing and uh, enjoy recording my music, of course. And when I'm not doing any of that, DJ Prieto, you know that I am an entrepreneur. So I have my art line called Cocola Wear. Um, it has hats that have been worn by Papo Luca, Gran Combo, eh, Samara Ponceña, uh, Larry Harlow, and I also have jewelry lines that are of my design. So me in a nutshell, nurse, singer, and artist. <laughs> right. So here, I mean, let's, let's talk about the obvious. You, you, you call yourself La, eh, 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 la Enfermera de la Salsa. <laughs> right, right, right. And that's because of the fact that you're a nurse and... Um, I'm sure with this COVID thing, that ha that's got to be something very affecting you directly, right? So this right, is, this is <laughs> I mean, we're talking about music, but this this is something that's a little different for you. This that is something that's happening right now, right? right I mean, right. it affected me in, in various ways. As an army nurse right now, I'm in an installation that's called Fort Lewis. We, we have no choice but to go to work. We have to be there for our patients. And so we're here in California for, for Irwin, California. And um, so yeah, work didn't stop. Work didn't stop. What we had to do was protect ourselves as much as possible, but there's still always, you're always scared. You're always worried about, you know, contracting something and then bringing it home to your family. So you're always worried about that. Um, as far as when COVID came through, pretty much we got on lockdown just like everybody else and we are still currently on lockdown because the military wants to protect their valuable assets such as myself <laughs> um they really have us uh closed off to the world in, in in a sense and that has kind of slowed down a bit the music but thank goodness to technology and the creativeness of other people and and everything that we have i've been doing concerts that de mi casa and actually tonight i'm going to be recording my father's day concert for everyone so uh, it'll be launching on Sunday but yeah COVID definitely made an impact both positive and negative right right so I mean let's so let's talk let's talk about the, and thank you for that um and thank you for your service obviously My uh, honor. so let's talk about you personally um how old were you when you first started into the singing aspect of it okay because obviously you said your father was in the army but uh, were you on the army base and were you getting the music? <laughs> right, that? right, exactly. So yes, my father joined the army at a year old. So my music, I always kind of say that it relates through my veins, right? It goes, my life, my line of music comes through my father's side. I have an uncle and several cousins who are doing very well in the music. They're cuatristas. And for those of you who are from Puerto Rico, you know that the cuatro is our national instrument, a very traditional instrument that talks of speaks wonders of our culture. And so that's my uncle and Cristian Nieves is one of my, his son, my cousin, who has recorded with Ricky Martin and just recorded on Despacito, as well as his sister. So that comes the line of music. Now, as a child of an army soldier who's traveling around the world, I didn't necessarily only sing salsa, let's say, or only sing Spanish music. I actually started singing in the church. I started singing okay. in church. I started um, playing the flute. So that's how the musical aspect began. 
but everything was pretty much English music. What I listened to, however, at home was salsa. Salsa was what brought me back to my culture, brought me back to my roots. You know, people on the bus listening to hip hop, R&B, I love it. Um, country, soul, I sing all of that. I have it in my veins, but salsa is really what brought me always back to my land, to my tierra, to Puerto Rico. And so I started about, um, I would say about five years old. I was singing in the choir, playing flute throughout middle school, high school, college. And so continued on through there. It explains why the flute was busted out at the concert that we had with you. <laughs> so. I always got to bring a little bit of that. And you, know, you may remember too, I always try to bring a little bit of um, English music to my, even to my salsa. So like I will yeah. sing, I have a Janet Jackson cover called Anytime, Anyplace. Um, so I always try to bring influences from my past so that I can capture a whole a bigger audience, right? We want salsa, we want Latin music to not only hit our Latinos, but hit all of our, our brothers and sisters around the world. Well, we know we know that, I mean, you know, um, for example, personally, I, I've been involved in the salsa scene for 29 years now. Uh, and mm -hmm. the the fact that it has broadened, you know, the, 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 cli the clientele has broadened, let's put it this way, is it? It used to be, it used to be just, just Puerto Ricans, but now it's everybody, it's all across the board. That is what's so beautiful about it. Right. And so since you started that, you said about five years old doing flute, when did you get into it more, I guess, uh, took it to the- Starting artist, Right, right, right. When sure. did you- So um, college, I was able to get a scholarship through music. Um, I actually, you know, kind of dropped college to go into the army and, and pursue my career as a nurse. And it was during that time, about 2007, that actually two years before that, that I met my husband. And I, I mentioned my husband because he was extremely instrumental in bringing what it is today, Isi La Enfermera de la Salsa, to life. So my husband is a, was a promoter and is a promoter, a marketer. He had that facet. So for those who are singers out there who are um, going to school for music and everything, that's one, only one slim, slim piece of the pie. When you're an artist, you, you have to become a promoter, a marketer. You have to become a graphic designer. You have to, you do a little bit of everything. And most importantly is to have somebody behind you that really can, can, um, give you the confidence, give you, um, promote you like some, you know, nobody else. Right. And right. so it wasn't until I met my husband that we started on the journey of creating what it is today, Isis La Enfermera de la Salsa. So about well, 2007, it started slowly going yeah. up, but I recorded my first uh, songs in about five years ago and I just know. launched my CD this year. <laughs> right. And I think me and your husband talked almost three years prior to, I think it was three years. Oh, wow. prior to, I remember that was, it was Lewis and I were talking and we're just talking about different, you know, bringing art because I've always been, um, you know, I was looking for new talent to bring yeah. in Chicago and stuff like that. And I think Lewis and I were, were, were talking and, you know, he was, and, and I could hear it, you know, he kind of gave me his background and he's like, yeah, let's just bring her in, let's bring her in Chicago, let's bring her in Chicago. And I just, I, I guess the, um, the chips fell in place and it's like, okay, you know what? And then we had that, um, it was a phenomenal event that we did. It was, we did the, 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 it was the, so we, we brought you in Chicago, but okay. So I want to, I want to get back to you where you college time. Yeah. I, I, and then you, you meet your husband and then you, you decide to do this. You, you do, kind of do this as a, as like, okay. And, and I, I guess what, what I'm saying is that how do you, what do you go to a studio and you say, Hey, I want to record a song. It's your song. It's somebody else's song. How do you, how do you go about it? It's, it's sure, coming sure, out. Sure. Well, I will need to, I will need to say that, right. It is a journey. Um, so even though I studied some music in school and I studied voice in school and everything, it's very different when you are on the scene, right? You need to develop a way to connect with your audience immediately connect with the public, knowing how to read your public. You as a DJ, I know you know that as well. When you see the dancers on the floor, okay, what am I gonna throw next? Do I need to do this? Do I need to do that? So the way that I started developing that was um, actually singing at karaoke, karaoke bars. I started singing out there. I started writing my own songs, having ideas on music. And then I um, started this actual recording journey through a composer, his name is Gil Francisco. 
Y Francisco uh, worked and has, has written songs for Victor Manuel, like Dile a Ella, for uh, Frankie Ruiz, for uh, Maelo, many, many artists. And he, he came to uh, Texas and one of the people that we were working with with the shows, he liked something about me. He liked my voice. He, he believed in me and he gave me three songs three songs that began this journey of recording. So the three songs are actually now on my newest CD. And I literally went to a recording studio. I started with Mike Rivera from Chicago. Yes. Somebody you probably know. <laughs> Absolutely. An incredible bass player, An incredible bass player. He arranged three of Aji Francisco's songs. So that's how I started. And you also know another person that was involved in that three, um, Ricky Luis from Inglaterra. Yes, yes, yep, yep. So he was involved in that first three songs that was about five years ago that I recorded them. And from there, it's been continuously uh, between Bucando, looking for composers, looking for arrangers such as Chino Nunez, Carlos Garcia, um, musicians from different around the world, Eric Pisa, you may know Eric Pisa from New Jersey. Mm -hmm. And that's been it. It's literally making contacts, making relationships, finding songs that touch my soul so that I can replicate that feeling on stage. And that's been the journey. It's literally relationships, the well, core well, of everything. <laughs> well, it's, it's okay. So let's, let's look at the uh, reality fact with the salsa music. Yes. Um, there are very few women all right, it, 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 there are very few women, and, and, and I don't mean it against the women on this. No, but not it's, at all. It's a reality. It, it, that is the reality it, of right. the situation. Because salsa is, you know, I mean, and then you're competing against La India and Brenda K. Star, you know, and, and, and they, they and labels that had their labels during that time. And right, right. And, 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 you know, and then there's Celia Cruz and, you know, they, that's, that's, um, I guess that because this is, um, salsa has always been a masculine kind of a situation and stuff like that. But, it, but I, what, one of the things that I think has helped a lot. Uh, for women now in, in comparison, and, and the same thing, like I'll say, like in the reggaeton market, reggaeton market was very masculine before. And in the, in the, the genre now is that, you know, women are becoming a big part of the reggaeton movement and stuff like that, because, and, yeah. and, and you know, and, and I think that also has changed in the, um, the, um, the aspect of music, because now there's videos and now there's, you know, you actually see, the you know the the uh, whether it's bachata salsa I, I think that helps a lot now because now you get to see people's faces and yeah. and, and the YouTube videos and the and the videos that are out there um, that's the obviously great for marketing <laughs> you know what I mean you know? I'm sure if you see a beautiful woman on your screen you yeah. may have to tune in perhaps. <laughs> So I mean, so you know, we probably got about a thousand views right now. So don't worry about it. <laughs> so it ain't because of me. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> so I mean, definitely, videos have I think made a, an incredible difference. Without it, well, I think, I think I think video. You know, and I I don't know if you've ever talked to any of the guys. Um, you know, um, all the guys that I I book and, and one of the things I always tell them is say please send me a video send me a video of the song don't just send me a track because yes I can play the track and it's good but when yes. there's a video behind it it it, it just may, it it adds to the marketing it adds to the whole thing and, and you know and I think people are finally realizing in this industry especially in the salsa industry um, video helps that's why the guys out in in Italy the guys out in Spain you know they 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 come out with videos and you know and especially in Cuba. You know, let's be honest with you. In Cuba, that there's tons of videos now that are coming out, and it's it's opened up the market so big now in this in this industry. And you know, and and, and honestly, that's why I think a lot of people um, have focused now on the salsa scene now because there's this visual aspect of it as well. Right. It isn't just it's just it's, it's, voice is good. Yes, the voice is yeah. good and stuff like that. But now there's a visual aspect of it, and I think that helps a lot with the marketing and and it's pleasant to the ear pleasant to the eye pleasant to you know and yeah. and, and, and so i, I want to watch salsa dancing too i mean right. just seeing that alone in 
for those who don't, who aren't into salsa, maybe have not really heard of it, when they see those dancers collaborating together and see those movements, what it's so breathtaking. It's breathtaking and it's addictive. <laughs> yeah. so, so definitely, I agree that the visual is making a big difference. So Carmen, Carmen's online as well. So hello, Carmen. <laughs> Thank you, Carmen. Love her. She she was the first ones over here in LA who uh, really believed in me and obviously extended me over to Chicago. And, and so truly appreciate. So, so you see how this is. Carmen's from Chicago. Yeah, yeah. Mike Rivera's from Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it Chicago. crazy? And I never lived in Chicago. I again, I'm an army soldier, so I'm like not every anywhere in particular. It's incredible how God has put people into my path and how they have all started kind of coming together. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, it, it, you know, I think I think, you know, I, I I'm not gonna take anything away from the East Coast and West Coast. But I think one of the things that happens Midwest wise, and I say Midwest wise, because it could be Minneapolis, could be Chicago, could be Kentucky, could be, you know, all, all those areas and even Texas and stuff like that. What happens in the middle, I think there is no question about you're either a salsa lover or you're not a salsa lover. That's, I, I, there's no gray in, in that. Whereas in the East Coast and West Coast, I think it becomes kind of like, well, it's here, so I gotta listen to it. <laughs> you know where. Right, right. It, where, I, I see where, what you're saying. Sure. Where, where it's in the show, it, it, and and then we have hardcore. <laughs> you know, we have the hardcore, like really. On the left and the right, the extremes. Right, right, right. There's no, there's no, there's no, you know, like guessing uh, what I don't like and what I do like, and I think that's why you see that scene, especially here. And I and I had to say about Chicago, Midwest aspect of it, because we tend to be pro active and we are very what's called and obviously you know the, um, I, um i'm very proactive in the in the fact that i was bringing live artists and live music and live you know that's been one of the things um you being a live artist uh -huh. uh, and with this covid as, as well you had mentioned it about the about the uh you know doing the the concerts from like dream how uh, I'm sure you had it affect you in what all these concerts that were gonna happen for you in the summertime. Yes. <laughs> so. yes. yes, I definitely had quite a few plans, had many plans, um, various festivals. Tommy Rosa over here in, in LA was gonna have me in San Diego, sorry, in San Diego. Carmen had a lot of ideas as well in a lot of places, but you know what, I haven't stopped. So I'm in a small community in the military and I always want to give back to those who are around me. I really believe DJ Prieto in the, the power that music has. Um, my first song that I wrote is called Te Curare, and it literally talks about that. I, I'm here to heal you with music. You know, that's, that's how I feel. And so I have taken that to the community here in Fort Irwin. I've done actually concerts where we maintain social distancing, of course. I was, was literally on a platform driving throughout the different communities singing live. So I have found whatever way that I can creatively to still continue to bring music and still bring that um, healing power <laughs> mentally. We were talking earlier that COVID has, has created a lot of uh, anxiety, depression, um, hostility amongst a lot of people. And it's through Saisa in particular. <laughs> I'm a little, I'm a little um, partial to my Saisa. Oh, well, of course, <laughs> and you should be. <laughs> That's the, that's the music that has the power to heal. And so through Saisa, I really um, have started, I, I take personally the time to run and listen to salsa and heal myself, heal my soul, heal my mind through our music, through our music. So, but yes, things have slowed down. So live concert through Facebook has been one way that I continue to keep my fans engaged. Right, as right. an artist, we live for our fans. And you know, as a DJ, you live for your followers. Well, what, what do you think I'm doing this show? Because I'm doing it for, for you know, and, and obviously, mm -hmm. and obviously I, I, I've, um, with this show and talking to you, talking to dancers, because I'm, I'm, I'm people. I want people to understand that the show is not just about interviewing. You know, I'm, I'm trying to interview everybody in the music industry, and also yes. music industry in in my reach. And I have a pretty good reach. Oh, there. I'm, I'm <laughs> 20, 29 years, you said, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, oh. 29 years in the salsa industry, but 40, 
44 years in the music industry. Congratulations. So, you know, it's, that's wow. just, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a many, many, many years of, of doing this in the, in the music industry. But, you know, my reach is not just, you know, just salsa. My reach is, uh, you know, a high energy funk, uh, R&B, you know, English wow. as well as, uh, and, you know, and then, and then of course I'm playing all music of uh, Swahili, French, Arabic, you know, I'm playing everything. So, wow. uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm reaching, you know, reaching everybody out there. And, Hello. you know, <laughs> and, and one of the things that I'm, I'm very aware of is that, especially what's going on right now, you know, uh, globally, I think music is a healing situation. Um, in one, one, a couple of my interviews, if you ever hear my discussion about, I think with everything else that's going on with the this, this situation that's going on with the riots and yes. everything like that, yes. and, and that and there's, there's tensions build up and there's, and the witchcraft. And one of the things that I was talking to, one of the interviewers were talking about how, I remember the riots that were happening here with the Puerto Rican community that was happening here. And I believe that was uh, 1883. Uh, oh, excuse me, 1773, excuse me. Oh. And I remember that was one of the things that I, I came across in, in how that was a difficulty was happening. And then like a, two years later, there were salsa bands coming out of Chicago. Um, uh, I, I forgot the name of the group, uh, part of it, because I think it was, um, it, and they'll probably let me know what it is, but all of a sudden here comes groups coming out of Humble Park. And these groups were coming in, the record labels, uh, Iberica came out. Uh, and, and I think that is a result of things that happen, you know, um, and yes, there's frustration, but I think that's what people figure out is that, okay, let me create music and let's talk let's about something things. positive. Right, and I think that's, and, and I'm sure that's gonna happen with a lot of you artists that are out there that are stuck at home right now. You guys are probably going, Okay, let me write, let me, let me write, let me write. Crazy. Yeah, so you have the creativity that comes out, um, creativity that comes out in, in many ways. Um, I just got, I was just uh, in, a, in a, invited to do a song called Heroes. It's about the heroes in the front line. Um, Richie Rey, Bobby Cruz is on it. Uh, and the cool thing is, again, these artists right now, legendary artists, are at home and they're looking for ways to also give back to the community. And so this, in this one particular, I don't know if you want me to show them, this one in particular, they actually did a video and it's got all the different artists here on, I don't know if you can see that, but there's Richie yeah, Rey, right. Bobby Cruz, right. um, giving back to the community. So definitely as, as we are home, we wanna give back, we wanna send a message of positivity mm -hmm. and, and to hopefully see you guys out there soon, <laughs> sooner than later. <laughs> I, I, I mean, it's, and, and, and I feel for you artists, trust me, I feel for it. I, I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm in the same situation, just like Carmen is, yeah, we're, we're promoters and we're, we're, we're events coordinators and, you know, talking to the guys who are doing the, you know, we're, we're trying to be creative as much as we can, you know, that's, that it, it's, we're, you know, the live stream is one thing, but I know we're trying to figure ways, especially to be socially responsible. I guess that's the best way to, because we want our fans and our people to be safe no matter what, you know? <laughs> yes, you don't want to put them at risk. We don't want right. to risk so, anybody. And, and how it's going to slowly happen, you know? And I guess that's where, you know, but you know, in, in, in that aspect of it, you were mentioning that you besides doing the music you mm -hmm. also are doing other things besides music is that what yes. so so yes. I, have you, a, I have a new project so again the creativity juices started flowing okay. <laughs> and um, part of uh, the what i've been doing and focusing on while i have been at home is physical fitness right as an army soldier i have to maintain my physical fitness anyway so i've been running a lot and walking a lot and so with that i wanted to bring music physical fitness and a nonprofit together. And okay. I actually have a virtual run. It's a 5K or a 10K. You can either run it or walk it and it's virtual. So we're maintaining that social distance. And when people sign up, they're gonna be getting, they're gonna be giving a donation to the Rudy Regalado Foundation, which supports kids and music, which that goes right into my spot. So kids and music, 
they're going to get a medal that I designed and they're going to get my album, my new, new album that just launched with 11 salsa tunes, as well as a guajira on there. And they're going to get all of that and, and give the, the, and, and give back to um, children as well as give back to their soul and their physical fitness and get them motivated. If some people have been on the couch for the last couple months, I'm now sure. they can get out and run I'm and sure. walk and feel good about themselves. So that's called Corro con Salsa. And if they're interested, I've got Facebook, I've got a YouTube, I've got um, uh, my website. It's called CorroConSalsa.com. Okay. So, so that was that, uh, that's the physical, the, you know, the physical aspect of it. But did you mention something about some wear that you do as well? The yeah, well, Cocora wear is is my line of uh, our, my line of designs. They're both hats, they're jewelry, such like this is a jewelry piece, and so that's Cocora wear. Cocora wear has was my line of um, des designs and jewelry and hats. So this is the Sonora Ponceña hat that literally was worn 55. by the Sonora Ponceña at the 65 anniversary. And so um, that's just another aspect of my art and my extent of the passion for design and music and awesome. culture. Cause I always bring salsa into my art, always bring culture into my art. Right. right. So that's cocolaware.com. Right. Um, one of the things that I was very thankful for is that when you and me and your husband were talking, we were talking about bringing you to Chicago and David Musio had, uh, just in case anybody didn't know, we had an event that was uh, for the soldiers. And that was for every, every, every Navy, Army, Marines, everybody. And you and Edwin uh, came to Chicago because it was called Warriors of America. It was, it was a tribute for the, for the uh, for front linemen, obviously, right? And, and we, we, you know, obviously um, we were, get, we were, doing it for the awareness of the um, soldiers that were injured, soldiers that, you know, and- and, 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 and the disabled, so yes. Right, mm -hmm. and, and, and people don't understand that sometimes it, this isn't just injury, a physical injury. There's also the mental injury that happens with stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys ha do something like this over there in Los Angeles or California? Do you guys, are, were you guys doing it? Um, so I haven't personally been specifically involved in another, I really, I really applauded your event. I thought it was great. It was a wonderful way to bring um, the military together, to bring awareness to the disabilities that happen, the PTSD, the veterans. Um, and so I really thank you. Thank you so much for that opportunity. I haven't really seen it too much over here in California. In Texas, on the other hand, there's a lot of veterans there. It's, San Antonio is a military city, so they do a lot of events um, focused on the military, but kudos to you and kudos to the team. I hope to uh, do it again at some point, because it's important to remember that people have lost their, their souls, lost their lives, uh, lost a lot of limbs, uh, fighting for our country, fighting for our country. Well, I, I know when Carmen and I talked about this, and it was specifically with you and Edwin, um, we had talked about trying to make this uh, a, a series, kind of like right, 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 taking it to yeah. different cities, and you know, and, and, and you know, it, it's it's a little tough for me because I'm, I'm central in Chicago, number one, number two, I'm doing five nights a week in Chicago as well. <laughs> so, so I, so it, 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 I, it, when I talked about, it, I said, yeah, it would be great, but you know, I. It's tough for me to say, okay, I'm going to concentrate on going to San Diego, concentrate on going to Texas, concentrate on going to California or, or Arizona, you know, and it's just like, oh, you know, but I, you know, I hope, and, and we also planned it again this year before this COVID thing happened, you know, <laughs> obviously that put a kibosh on a lot of things, um, you know, and, and I think it's a good plan yes. as far as to be done. You know, and I, and you know, you being out in California, you know, I, I talked to Carmen about that. I says, you know, I, I wish we can get some artists from that side of the country, that side of the country, and you know, it is, it's, it's not just. And I said, it's not going to be always the same singers. It would be different people that you have gotta different, involve different people, of course. Yeah, I think so. You know what? Through this live feed, maybe we'll get somebody out there that wants to join okay. in the team, get it going, you know, and and uh, spur up those. So Kevin just texted me. So it's still in the works. <laughs> yes. Yes. Everything's in the works right now. <laughs> right. You know, this is 
the time that we can start just building those plans, building those connections, right. making those relationships so that we can bring it out when we hear. And hopefully when I retire, God permitting in six years with my 20 years in the army, I will also be able to, let's do this. <laughs> so, oh, yeah. So uh, since you mentioned that, you said you're going to be, so you're, you're, you're 14 years in the, in the army. Is that what it, for my yeah, gathering? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going on 14 and I plan to do my 20, plan to retire. Okay, nice. Nice, nice, um, nice. No. So I, you just came out, you said you came out with an album now. This is the full <laughs> album and stuff like that. This is your full album. Um, but you've been making music now for the past five, five years, years, about mm -hmm. five years. Um, mm -hmm. If, what is your plan? I know with the Corona, that's, that's <laughs> it, it's slowing down, but I mean, what was your plan as far as going world tour, tour what was what was kind of the uh, my plan regardless of what is going on is to continue to get my music out there um okay. i have radio stations currently you know in spain and colombia and panama and london that are listening to my new new album spotify through spotify through you know all these technologies it's getting global and so once i'm able to actually start getting out there that's what i want to do because i think that the best way to present myself is to be in front of the people in front of my audience um it's, it's the reason why i do cocola wear a lot too why i do my art because during my performances i actually go down and i speak to my friends fans i give them um, my art i i you know interact with them and you have to interact with your fans i think it's so important to build that relationship one by one, 10 by 10, 100 by 100. And uh, because we need them, like I was saying earlier, Diego Prieto, without our fans and without our followers, we are just singing in our house by ourselves. So, <laughs> so I really want to thank, I want to take this opportunity to really thank your followers who are currently watching um, and don't know who I am and are wondering what, the, what, who is she? So thank you, I'm Isis, and it's really a pleasure to meet all of you through this. And my followers who are watching as well, DJ Prieto has given 44 years of his life to the music industry and, and uh, to the salsa 29 years. And I appreciate it immensely. And, and Carmen, who's there too, who's, who's giving her, her time, her devotion, her money, her, you know, everything to help continue to move our music and continue to move artists like myself who are new and that, you know, people don't really recognize immediately. Well, and speaking now, because uh, one of the guys that I brought to Chicago uh, about five years ago, mm -hmm. his name was Lucito Rosario. I don't know if you. Know. Yes, I know uh, Lucito. Yeah. I've sang with him over in New York. <laughs> and, and Lucito, um, and, and 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 why why I mention him is because Lucito and I communicated maybe about ten years ago, or, or you know, maybe about ten nine years ago, and. I remember the conversation of bringing him to Chicago and he's been in Chicago now. Now, mind you, I brought him uh, twice, but he was actually brought into Chicago about six times so far because, oh, wow, for, you know, by, because, because of the fact that other promoters and other people, you know, and um, he, he, he performed at the Chicago Salsa Congress. And one of the things that, you know, we talked about is like, okay. Um, and, and the reason why I bring him up is that it, his career kind of reminds me of what your career in the in the, in the early stages of, of what's going on. Uh, one of the things we talked about is collaborations. That was one of the things that I, you, you said you are saying with him and stuff like that. And, and I know he, he went out to Italy. He would collaborate with a couple. Yoko in Japan. Right, right, right. So that, that's what that and any plans with you as far as collaborations or you know going yes. forward with this well i've been blessed to be able to collaborate with um, mino segarra so i collaborated with him um we actually did a, a single called tratando beautiful song he arranged it and he's on that um single i also have uh i actually have a song that i am trying to pitch to a very well-known salsa artist I'm not going to reveal the name just yet. I want to make sure we get the thumbs up. But yes, collaborations are super important. And um, for those who are out there and would like to collaborate, I am all <laughs> I'm open. You know, this world is about relationships. It's about working together. Uh, Nino actually has some another project that I was with him as well and has me, um, Ismael Miranda on it. So, and the last project that I just did, Eroes, that has Bobby Cruz, Richie Rey. So yeah. yeah. Especially for uh, upcoming artists like myself, it's really important for us to, to reach out. And I personally 
ask, you know, for those legendary artists, those who I admired, you know, like Choco Horta, Victor Manuel, Gilberto Santa Rosa, um, Mark Anthony, those artists, La India, those artists that I had grown up with and admired, I humbly always ask, you know, please, I'm here. If you like what I have, I will give you my heart and soul. And um, so hopefully they will lend the hand as well because somebody had to do it for them at some point in their career. Well, yeah, that's- start, Yeah, somebody's gotta believe in you. Somebody's gotta, like he bet on and Victor Manuel reached out that hand and said, hey, let's get you up here. I, I right. see something right. in you. So well, I mean, my pray, it's my prayers that it will happen. <laughs> so so um, the other aspect that I would guess I was going to say, besides the collaborating, would you ever consider about doing um, different styles of music? Other, you know, in, in the Latin yeah. scene and stuff like that. Yes, you know, yes, reg yes, reggaeton, well. you know, bachata, as you know. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I actually have a merengue. It's called Torero that I'm going to be launching. I'm trying to figure, you know, what's hard is it, when do I launch things now with the COVID and everything? <laughs> well, see, that's- like, Should I hold it? Should I share it? I, I'm not sure, but I'm going to get there. But I have a merengue and I have a bachata as well. So okay. I, I am expanding my genres as well. As much as I am always going to be a salsera, you know, to the soul, I also love other music as well. And I realize maybe if I sing that one merengue song, I will capture that person and maybe they'll start listening to salsa as well. <laughs> so. well. Well, only because, you know, and, and I'll give you for instance, like Mark Anthony started as dance music and freestyling, right. you know, and, and, and evolved right. into that. And, you know, Landia, the same thing and stuff like that. So I know it, it, and one of the things that happened with this show when I first started and when we communicate with, and, and it started with a lot, just DJs and promoters and marketers, is that we found out that the the um, how how dance music basically is is reached a lot of these so uh, here I am with Tito Puente Jr. right yeah. and here I'm talking about that and we're talking about the whole thing about with the dance part of it and how he went into that whole direction and, and trust me I was there through the whole time I was there with him in in uh, Miami <laughs> and through the whole thing we were always hanging out together and I just remember that how the dance music aspect of it, you know, because you have a beautiful voice. So mm -hmm. I would, I, you know, and there's a lot of house producers out there as well. So don't think that, you know. Well, and, and, I, you know, DJ Preto, we gotta be real. I sing everything. Like literally I did a concert from my casa all in English. I'm talking about um, Celine Dion, Whitney Houston, um, Anna James, Frankie, Frank Sinatra. I did all of those songs. Um, so I do not discard by any means other genres. And I love to include them, as I mentioned, into my shows as well. Um, but just salsa is just the one that I specifically, you know, am recording currently. Right, but yeah, right. I'm open right. to everything. Yeah, because like, for instance, like India did River Ocean. That was a yeah, love and happiness. So that became like a like an iconic song for everybody. And 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 and, and honestly, it, 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 it brought in the career for her, obviously. So it made her, you know, and, and and so you know, and obviously Tito Puente was on the on the percussion for that. Yes, yeah, uh, you gotta was, get out of your. You can't always just be in your niche if you want to expand your horizon. I correct, think you correct. have to, you know, continue to open your arms to any opportunity that comes in, because you never know, right? That one song, that one genre, really might hit you. Look at Pink. Pink started um, with the uh, R&B and soul, and she obviously loves her rock, and she went in that direction, and it's been an amazing career for her. So yeah, sometimes we have to let the universe, the people <laughs> kind of determine- The, where the connections. <laughs> the relationships determine which route we're gonna go. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll stay true to my salsa, but if the opportunity comes up, yeah, I'm for it. I, I thank God I've got bilingual. <laughs> I've got both languages that I'm dominant in. Thank God that I have my musical background that allows me to understand what is jazz, understand what is funk, understand what is disco. So right, right. I, in a way, I'm versatile and I am open to it all. Well, that's 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 important. I, I and, and only only because of the fact that yeah, you know, me as as a DJ slash promoter. One of the things that I tell guys who are playing, the band members, and you know, yeah, it, for instance, you worked with Angel Rodriguez. Yes, yes, and, and shout and out to Angel if he's there. <laughs> yep, yeah, yeah, he's he's here. Of course, he's here. <laughs> um, and you know, and we we Angel and I 
Um, you know, I don't know if you're aware of this, but that was a discussion that Angel and I had uh, because of we talking to your husband. Yeah. And Angel and Rodriguez and I had a discussion. Now, Humble Park Workers has been um, created about going on six years. And one of the things that Angel and I talked about, and and, and by no means am I going to say that I create Humble Park Workshop, but I was instrumental in the creation of it. And Angel knows it too. Yeah. And he tells it that we, we talk about it. And I said, listen, Angel, I would like to have a band that's going to be universal for everybody because because I because the explanation to Angel was like listen I love this band I love that band I love that band but can we get all the top band members together yeah. and you know and he he kind of break it down to me he tells me you know Angelo he goes you're right but here's what's going to have to happen you're going to have to spend a little bit more money I says well <laughs> how much more money we're going to spend and he gives me a number and says okay let's do it you know and then you know he comes up and says all right I, what are you going to call the band? Humble Park Workshop. All right, send me this and I'll create the logo and that logos I created oh, as well. Oh, awesome. <laughs> but in the discussion of doing the band, I says, all right, so who are we going to get as singers? And I said, let's get everybody. And, and, I, and when I said everybody, we talk about everybody that's not just from Chicago, but everybody like in the hands of Lucito Rosario, um, well. to, you know, uh -huh. you, um, um, Lisette Morales as well, you know, and, you yes. know, and, yes. and all of those people. And I, and I says, you know, we need to bring this, this we, you know, and, and obviously, you know, there's, there's the band members that are important as well. Um, um, Ed, Edwin Sanchez, I says, oh, you know, we're going to make sure that Edwin Sanchez is part of it. So hence, that's why we got, you know, uh, these artists to come in, uh, Nino Segura. So, you know, yeah. it, it, yes. so, so if, if, it, and it's funny because when Nino was contracted by, uh, you know, I got Carmen to bring her, the first person I said, oh, well, Edwin Sanchez is going to do the music. Going to, and that was it. It was like, okay, fine. <laughs> you know, raise the yeah. yeah. boom it out. Okay, Edwin Sanchez is going to be. So I know when we get, you know, certain musicians are going to know other musicians that are going to be part of this band in Chicago. You know, and, and I wish we could bring Mike Rivera to Chicago <laughs> like oh, that. And I know. I know. He's, he's so awesome. The professor. I mean, he's a professor. Yeah, I know. Him. I know. And, and you know, and, and me, me and Mike known each other woo, so from, from, from way back in the days and stuff like that. But I, I've always known the quality has to be there first. Because once you yes. have the quality, the quantity will follow. And, and that's kind of something that I've always been focused on in, in this Chicago, especially Chicago when there's a band and there's an artist and a singer um, on stage, I wanna make sure that the full picture is being on there. And, and, yes. you, you, and, and I'm sure, and, and I'm telling you where to name them, I'm sure you had horror stories in which a backup band is not what like, ah. <laughs> like, it is unfortunately the risk that we do take. The risk that we do, especially when I come to a, a band and say, okay, I want to do this many salsa tunes, and I also want to do a disco tune, and I'm going to throw a merengue and a bachata in there. The bands are like, what? And, you know, I was listening to Mike Rivera's interview. Back in the day, those bands were much more open to doing various genres in a night. But recently, in the last years that I've been, it's very difficult to find those musicians who are able to play a merengue as good as a bachata, as good as a salsa, as good as a cumbia, as good as a disco. It just doesn't happen very often. So I understand Angel's kind of like, whoa, wait a minute. But I know that when you get those expert musicians and those professionals who have studied the music, you can really make they're called them. they're called old school musicians. Old school musicians, <laughs> yes. So I'm gonna call myself an old school artist at heart. You know, I <laughs> I've studied everything, and I and that's what I love to give the public because the Pedro, you never know who's gonna be there. There might be you know a country <laughs> fan in your audience who's like, man, if she were to sing me that one country song, I would be in love. And so that that's what I try to do in my shows. I, I really try to to give a little bit of everything, which is why I also am recording uh, the merengue and the bachata as well. So, that's cool. That, that that's cool. Yeah. And so I mean, I, I mean, love I, I love your thoughts. I love the way that you think that you need to give a little bit of everything. That's the way I am. Well, well, only only because of the fact that you know. 
I mean, I dabbled in, in music. I, dab, I, I cannot sing. I, I tell everybody I can't sing, but you know, but I, I mean, obviously in, in music production I've done as well, you know, and I, and I, and I talked to Angel about, you know, I know what it takes to be, be a musician, not that I'm a musician by no means, but I, I know what it, you know, play piano by, by ear, yeah. you know, and I think one of the things that I love is when I see an artist through their art or their craft. Mm -hmm. And I think when um, you were on stage, two things that I can tell you that happened at the uh, concert that you, you were there. First of all, your um, your star was a Star Spangled Banner, or what? What was yeah, it that the you? National you, anthem, the, the national anthem. The national anthem. The national anthem. I, I I remember something about that, um, where the whole place froze. And, I, and, and I, I looked at everybody, I was looking at everybody and it was like, okay, this is surreal. This was very surreal. And when you sang it, I was like, wow, this is, this is something that I says, uh, and, and thank God we got it on rec recording. And I says, this is, this is going to go down in history here, right here, right here, right now is, is history right now. And I remember just, just, and I had to, I was on stage and I was like, okay, I got to go to the DJ booth. And I had to like sneak back. <laughs> I was like, okay, because everybody froze, nobody was moving. And if I, I, stood, like, okay. <laughs> I stood there, this would not happen next. <laughs> so I had to like, Okay, I was gonna be the only one moving, and I was like, okay, I gotta be real quiet, and and I it, you could hear a pin drop. Seriously, it was like that. Oh. Then when you were, were singing, and then you busted out the flute, that was mm -hmm. like I was like, oh my god, that was it. So that was a, a pleasant surprise for me, and I I don't know, did you guys did you guys set that up with the band, or was that something that was that was the song? It's um called uh, Soy Tu Guajira. And it's on this okay. album actually that's out there. And so, yeah, I I wanted to do a guajira so that I can incorporate the flute more um, traditionally and more uh, just normally, I guess you would say. <laughs> so so yeah, it, allows I mean, more, it allows for a lot more impronto and and, and um, ad lib type of. Yeah. So I was and and then and then one of the cool things is that obviously concert's done. You left to Beck. Back to Texas. I think I was living in Texas still. Yeah. <laughs> right, right. And I, I, the conversation is with the musicians, and that's the one the the, the, the biggest things that I always look for is mm -hmm. I talk to the musician, and and trust me, I talk to every musician. They talk to me. There's they give me their feedbacks and they give me the pros and cons and stuff like that. And everyone's like, not. Nah, and I remember that. No, that's a real artist. That's a real. Cause she's Aww. she's the real, real, real deal. That's that's kind of the the gist of it. The real deal. <laughs> I said, oh yeah. I said, no, nah, that's the real deal. And, and you know, and obviously, I'm like, do we bring her back? And I said, yeah, we got to bring her back. I said, okay, cool. You know, so I mean, in, in, we got to do something, DJ Prieto, with a little bit of everything. A little yes, bit of yes, everything. Yes, fun. Yes. We got to so, do it. But thank you. That is the utmost um, biggest compliment. You know, to come from musicians to get their respect is is definitely immensely compl complimentary to me. Thank you. Right. So <laughs> I, I, I appreciate everything. It's okay. okay. So, I mean, um, I'm not going to keep you much longer and stuff like that. I know you're going to get prepared for it. I've been having such a blast. I love it. Thank you so much. <laughs> I, I, I know you're preparing for it. It's tomorrow, right? Tomorrow's your virtual. I'm going to be singing it tonight. I'm going to record it tonight and then it's going to go live on Sunday. No, uh, no, I'm Fox. talking about your virtual run. Your virtual run. Oh, my virtual run. Yes, tomorrow I'm going to do a virtual run. I've got another one with Panama DJ Station on July 1st and uh, Oklahoma DJ on July 10th. So okay. people can people can do it any day, but those days in particular, you get to have a live host. <laughs> right, right, yeah. I mean, just like like today, one one of the things that has happened, and and, and I'm very thankful that I, I do this, and I, I you know I could tell you how many people log on, how many people are here, yeah. but it, I think we're averaging about four thousand five hundred views on each of our awesome. interviews and stuff like that so it's it's, it's 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 growing it's it's growing and people are you know and, and and i find it amazing that sometimes the 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 conversations that i don't think are going to be are big get big and i'm like oh really you know you the conversation know. the conversation that i don't think is going to be big is it, it, it's like oh this is going to be huge 
Yes. Nah. <laughs> like That's the interesting part of social media. Um, the people really have a lot of say in what becomes a hit and doesn't become a hit. And sometimes when we feel, oh my gosh, this is going to be the best thing. You're right. It doesn't happen that way. But that's, that's the cool thing that people have the power in their hands to make it amazing and, and viral and move it all over the place. So, but congratulations to you. I think you're doing, I mean, we so appreciate the opportunity and I know your fans are appreciating being able to hear the behind the scenes. A lot of people don't get to, to see what you do, you know, and, and, and who you collaborate with behind the scenes. Well, I mean, you know, and, and, and it's not, it's not just about me, but it's about, you know, like, like for you, you're, you're behind the scene in a sense of here, I did a concert. So we, I want to make sure people understood what you do, what you're about, what you're, what you're about. And, and, you know, and especially when we bring you back in Chicago, they'll know exactly who you are. <laughs> you know, yes, I can't wait to go back to Chicago. I loved it. I actually did a, a design for Chicago, for Puerto Ricans in Chicago with the, the uh, metal. So, you Where's know, the, that? Where's it at? <laughs> upstairs, maybe. See if you can get it upstairs. I wonder if I can get it here. Yeah, I'm gonna put it on a post underneath one of them. I'll put it up. Uh, okay, please, please, please. Yeah, it was for my Chicago Boricuas. I was, I felt the love in, immediately, and I know I'm gonna come back. <laughs> <laughs> Carmen is gonna be working something. We actually had something going um, with uh, Ricky Luis, and so that we were gonna be collaborate together over there. So hopefully it'll happen sooner than later. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Because I know Ricky. Ricky is always, you know, and I, I see an interview. You know, I still. Um, one of the, the cool things is that um, when I started the show, Angel has started his show and Angel and I, we, we communicated all the time about okay. this, particularly in the show. And I says, well, I don't want to do what your show is. And, and, and he does a lot more musicians than I do. Sure. And I, I didn't want to do um, Carmen saying the Vendetta Vendetta. Obviously, that was <laughs> that that ain't gonna happen. <laughs> Sorry, Carmen. <laughs> no, no, no. This is um, all about love. And <laughs> I know, you know. And I, I don't know. Did you uh, did you see what I'm going to be doing uh, June uh, 12th here in uh, with the uh, silent picnic thing? Did you see that? That I uh, haven't seen that. No, I've okay. got to go. So got so to so. I'm trying to figure out ways, and, and obviously the uh, Carmen, if you're listening, uh, she is listening. <laughs> I'm doing this thing, this thing called the silent picnic, and it's it's an interesting concept because what I'm doing is, and I'm doing it specifically with three three sets of DJs, not three DJs, but three sets of DJs. So what it is is that I'm doing a social distance silent picnic. Um, you might have seen them where I have the head, they have the headphones on, and you could choose the music you want to hear. Oh yes, you know where okay. I saw those first on cruises. I think they had them. They, 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 they okay. So the concept that I'm doing is that the three different channels are different styles of music. One's Latin, one's English, and the other one, uh, or should I say, English is it's uh, you know house music, dance, uh, freestyle, alternative. And the other ones, R&B, hip hop, uh, you know, and more of the slower beat tempos and stuff like that. So we're doing that. But the reason why we're doing it is we're doing it as a picnic and we're keeping, it's called social distancing that we're gonna be keeping with these headphones. And I, you know, what we're trying to do is that have people go out on a picnic, but because they're gonna be renting these headphones, we want people to, in the little groups to stay in the little groups. We don't want them sure. to. Sure, they don't need to. It's like a virtual uh, party in a picnic setting. Right, right, and, cool. and that's and that's kind of what we're doing. Now, the trick is now, and, 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 and the trick is now is because we decided not to do any of the live music per se, because we didn't want people to surround a stage and speakers and stuff like that yet. So I'm wondering if there's a way, and, and you know, I, I talked to some local band members, if there's a way that this can be worked out in the same kind of way with musicians in, in a sense of because, because the problem happens is that when you have a band, everybody wants to gravitate to the stage and I get yes. that. And, and, and that's, that's what we're trying to avoid right now. You know, and you, gotta understand, you could understand why we're, we're doing it this way. Yes. Until if a vaccine comes out, then then it's you know everybody yeah game let's on, go game on. <laughs> game on yes yes but you know uh, it's it's one of the ways that I'm trying to do it 
differently and at the same time keeping my customers safe and keep it everybody kind of interested in what's going on because I know people want it want they want the music they want to hear the music and stuff like that but at the same time I you know I wonder how we can do this with live bands live music and stuff like that it's you know it, I wish there was a there was a you know I'll figure it out <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I, think, I think you will. You know what, what the first step is to have the idea, to have the idea right, and right, just right. keep cultivating it until um, it gets to where it is. But I love it so far. It sounds like a lot of fun. I yeah, would so. be game. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome. Yeah, definitely. I look forward to, to seeing the, the promotion for that. Well, the yeah, the, the, the promotion's up already, but one of the things that everybody's telling me, oh, well, make sure you live feed it because I think it's going to be something that I think all promoters in, I guess, in the country are going to want to take a look at to see how this oh, is, yes. this is, this see, is how done. done. <laughs> how it's done and who is the first one to do it. It's kind of like my virtual run. It takes a little bit of time for people to understand the concept, but once they get it, then it's going to be like a, a run for it. So good, awesome. Good, good. You know, I found the, the Chicago, let me see if you can see it. So, oh, you uh, uh, off the uh, off the uh, okay. I got it. I got it. Yeah. So I drew that, and I have it available in uh, jewelry and magnets and pins and all kinds of fun stuff. <laughs> cool, cool. Make sure to put all that stuff on the posting on the bottom of the uh, the feed thank here. You. Okay. Thank, thank you. you so much, DJ Prieto. Right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All right, guys. Well, yes. Yeah, so well, say goodbye to everybody. Um, goodbye to Carmen. I, I know is there. Thank you so much, Carmen. Always for your your support. Thank you, Chicago fans. All, all the fans that you have around the world, DJ Prieto, and thank you, DJ Prieto. Many blessings to everybody. Stay safe, stay healthy, and stay salsera. <laughs> stay <laughs> salsa. Thank you. Appreciate it. Well, thank you. Bye -bye. Take care. <laughs>